Hey everyone, Astro Brony here, and welcome back to Quills and Rockets. Now, before we start today's episode, I'd like to apologize to everyone for the whole fiasco regarding the Quills and Rockets episode 100 bonanza. For those of you who don't know, our episode 100 bonanza was taken down due to some copyright issues, and I don't plan on re-uploading it in fear of it causing more problems. I'm not exactly sure yet if I'm going to try posting it somewhere else for people to watch, but I'll let you know if I do. In the meantime, we'll be working out methods of how to prevent those sorts of issues in the future and keep things running as smoothly as possible. So, with that said, let's get started on this week's episode, Princess Spike. Well, I guess we've been overdue for a Spike episode. And this one... Uh... Hey, Astro. You remember back in Lesson Zero when Spike was a competent, supportive, and actively contributing character in the cast? I do! And I was really hoping to see more of that here. <sighs> but alas, we get more Spike debauchery. The episode starts out at BronyCon, I mean, the Grand Equestria Pony Summit. After some introductory words from Twilight, Spike comes on to speak for no discernible reason whatsoever, and he feels let down because he's not as popular as Twilight. <sighs> Unfortunately, I've already lost hope for this episode, I can't lie. Go lighten up, Thornquill. He's just trying to be helpful. After the theme, we cut to Spike tidying up Twilight's room when... Spike! Oh, we're back to the Spike abuse, are we? Turns out Cadence is looking for him because Twilight, well, she's a wreck. <laughs> a rather adorable wreck, though. Also, finals week. So Spike is tasked with making sure Twilight can get some rest so she can get back to dealing with the summit. It doesn't take long for the noise of Canterlot to concern him, though why he doesn't just close the window instead of climbing a neighboring tower to chase off a bird is beyond me. And so we get some lovely shenanigans of Spike trying to keep the entire city quiet, just so Twilight can get a good nap. And what are those? Dragon sneeze trees? Really? Also, let the professional do his work, damn it! Spike is able to use his connection with the princess to stop the work, and he even realizes he can use it to solve problems with some bickering delegates. I have to say, Minnesota Pony is my favorite thing about this episode so far. She's great! Along with that, I thought the political stuff going on with these two is pretty interesting, as both of them are using a bit of political leverage to get what they want. But since Twilight is asleep, she can't exactly solve any problems, so it's up to Spike. So, as Princess Twilight's longtime personal assistant, how does he go about solving this? Does he look through Twilight's materials to find a possible solution? Redirect inquiries to another princess? Or just give a random answer off the top of his head? And they just accept it like it's law. No arguments, no nothing. Man, could you imagine what the world would be like if politics worked like this? <laughs> <laughs> if only we could have a monarchy with benevolent alicorns. Spike decides he likes having the authority of Princess Twilight at his back and starts solving all kinds of disputes and trying to manage different aspects of the convention. All the while, giving no thought to the logistics, effects, or outcomes of his actions. And he continues like this for quite a while. Even... Wait. Spike? What are you doing? Are you messing with Twilight's checklist? Do you know what happened to the last person who messed with Twilight's checklist? They still tell tales of that day only in low voices in the darkest of corners. And then, who shows up but Little Miss Mary Sue herself, Princess Cadence, to check up on what Spike's been up to. Oh, lighten up, Astro. Cadence is a decent enough character. And here, she expresses some very valid concern over Spike's actions, but is reassured when Spike tells her that he 
knows Twilight so well that it's easy to make decisions like her. A point that actually should make more sense than this episode has so far. And then... this happens. This is where I lost faith. Up to this point, everything Spike has been doing with Twilight's authority has been with the best of intentions to help Twilight. But this? This is just selfish and childish. We do know that one of Spike's weaknesses is his avarice. But there are two reasons this doesn't work at all in this episode. First, this is old news. Nothing he does here is different than things he's done in past episodes. And second, it's not his avarice in these latest actions that are his downfall. No, that comes from what happened earlier, when he was at least trying to help Twilight, as the trees and the water main destroy everything. But he tries to assure Cadence that everything he's doing is with the best of intentions of helping Twilight. Now, enter our newest character, Murphy! Wow. Spike has reached all new levels of ineptitude in the writers' minds, hasn't he? The ponies are understandably quite upset that everything's literally gone to pieces. And... Huh. Fancy Pants certainly seems to have quite an organizational role in this. Good to see his character back for an episode. And who do they blame? Twilight, of course! Okay, this part confuses me. What exactly are they all going to do? I mean, in real-world politics, they would berate her and she'd lose credibility and lose an election. But this isn't how politics work in Equestria. The princesses aren't elected officials. They're not even monarchs or dictators. They're near godlike beings that control the sun and the moon! What the hell are these ponies thinking they're going to do as an angry mob? Berate her until she sends them all to the moon? Well, that certainly seems to be the extent of their plan. So the witch hunt goes up to her tower, nice cameo from Andy Price in this scene by the way, and Spike stops them. Huh. <sighs> Time for the obligatory, it was me all along, I'm sorry, spiel, or just not. Spike does absolutely nothing. Okay. No, he does try and do something. He tries to climb out the window to safety. What? Just really? The personal assistant, no. The lifetime friend of Twilight Sparkle is trying to escape out the window and leave her to an angry mob that he stirred up. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you our noble protagonist. Wow. And in the end of it all, there aren't really any consequences to this either. I mean, I don't really know anything about law but I'm pretty sure making decisions on behalf of someone without their consent is a little bit of a no-no. But all is forgiven, because he shows he's sorry by pathetically trying to put the statue back together again. These are the most forgiving politicians I've ever heard of. All it takes is a generic I messed up speech and a gesture from Spike, and suddenly the mob is the friendliest group ever. Can you imagine what politics would be like if it were that easy all the time? <laughs> the funny thing is, what caused this mess in the first place were the decisions that he made with the best of intentions. Ever heard of this one, Spike? The door to hell is opened with the incantation of good intentions. The funny thing to me is that all of this was caused by Princess Cadence not setting up a system to take care of Twilight's problems after putting her to bed. You know, like any convention staff or ruler of a country would know to do. No, hey Spike, I'll handle anything that comes her way in the meantime, or anything! Ugh. So, overall, not the greatest episode, especially in the shadow of last week's episode 100 special, but hey, we can't have episodes like Make New Friends But Keep Discord all the time. I'm really looking for an episode where Spike isn't a bumbling idiot who creates more problems than he fixes. You're exactly right. 
Episodes like Appaloosa's Most Wanted are perfectly forgivable if all they're guilty of is being a bit bland. What makes this episode so irritating for me is that Spike's characterization is one of the most inconsistent aspects of the show, and this episode barely gets any of it right. It doesn't focus on his vices or his growth as a character, even though it had the potential to. That line at the end where he says he liked it when ponies took him more seriously is actually quite good. But in this episode, the real flaw that causes all the problems is just that he's an idiot who can't think critically. And for a season that's shown all the other characters building on what they've learned in the past, that's a pretty glaring oversight. So, how do you want to rate this one? Really? The only way this episode gets points from me is that I liked all of the background characters. They were entertaining. Otherwise, I really didn't find much. I'd give it a three. A three? Wow, that's harsh. I would personally give it a five, but I guess we can compromise to a four. I would have given it a five, maybe even a six, if it didn't repeat all the old tropes with Spike that we've seen before when they weren't that good character writing to begin with. Agreed. Also, Trelestia, looks like you've got some competition. Wait, what is that pony? Oh, seriously? You're giving dragon sneeze to a dragon? And cliffhanger, albeit we know exactly what happens. So I guess that wraps up this episode of Quills and Rockets. So until next time, this has been Astro Brony. And Thornquill. And this is me, signing off. See you next time. Hundred Bonanza! Woo! After. And let's do a little ah uh, on whatever else. One, two, three. Ah! Ah! <laughs> nice. Uh, Am I supposed to join in on that? Yeah, sure, why not? A little late. Sure, why not? Alright, go on. Astro, you there? Yeah, I know, I'm here, I'm here. I'm okay. Read my line. Uh, yeah. I distracted him with the cat photo. I apologize. It's not my fault, it's the cat. Uh huh, the cat. <laughs> tub and it was like scrub a dub dub there's a kitty in the tub so i reblogged it <laughs> exactly this is what happens when you invite guests onto the show astro this I'm is what sorry. happens this is what happens when i'm in town stop go read your line right. you're not even looking <laughs> yeah but if she did speak and it wasn't no whacking people would kind of freak wait no, you skipped one. I skipped one? Yeah. Oh, uh, shit, I did. You're up moving on. Yeah, moving on. It's canon! It's fucking canon! They live together! Oh my god! Ship it! Ship it like FedEx! <laughs> <laughs> I'm breaking script for a second, Astro. That was beautiful. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Flipped. You just went off the deep end, though. That's why it was beautiful. <laughs> you went off the deep end. <laughs> Everyone went off the deep end today, Julie. It's not just him. Go away. Like I'm half deaf, and he's about to make me three quarters deaf. <laughs> I'm gonna lose it here. I must sound so ghetto. I promise you, I'm not ghetto. <laughs> I just dream of being ghetto. But I can't do it. Okay. Okay, no more of that. Alright. Which will um, actually get pissed at me. Look, it's like a squirrel and a tiger all in one. It's so cute. Oh, it's a shark <laughs> and a bird. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all go back to what you were doing. Okay, where are we? Okay. This review just jumped the shark. I hope you know that, Astro. She just made it jump the shark. Alright. Yep. <laughs> I'm back on track now, and you're not derailing me again. A okay. Thing. No, no more. I will not be derailed. <laughs> Are you guys reviewing this episode or just fangirling over it? 
Can I do that again? Yeah, you can yeah. do it. <laughs> Thank you all for watching, and special thanks to our guests, Wooten and Julia. And it, oh, I was going to say an extra, because I do an extra special thanks. Sorry, yeah, I realized uh, as soon as I read your line. Let me do that over again. <laughs> I have to say, Minnesota Pony is my favorite thing about this episode far. What? What did I say? <laughs> Hold on, I'm I'm hearing someone call me. Give me a second. Okay. Yeah. Who was calling for Astro? What new problem would he be presented with? Was it the university come to track him down at last? Is it Julia come to crash the review once more? People! Uh -oh. <laughs> People, sorry about that. Nope, you're good. <laughs>